Speech pathologists tend to see children in the critical language development stage, which is in the preschool years. You wear socks on your feet, you wear shoes on your feet, you wear boots on your feet, no way. A child's speech is the way they actually say sounds and their intelligibility. Uh, their language skills are, are split up into receptive, so their comprehension of, of language and also their production, their expressive language skills. Uh, Pre-literacy skills, so phonological awareness or metalinguistic awareness. Speech pathologists basically target functional communication skills, which are skills that a child will need for their entire life. Uh, most children will develop communication skills by the time they reach school, but for some of them, that's what this program is all about. It's trying to catch them and improve those skills before they hit school. This is one of a series of videos demonstrating activities that I do within local preschools. The activities were originally intended for small groups of children, but parents can easily do these with their own children by downloading the instruction sheet and, the rele and watching the relevant videos. This video shows a simple speech screening, a way of checking your own child's speech against their developmental age. Have a look at the pictures with your child and listen to the way that they say the words. Um, lion. Yeah, this is the lion's friend, it's a... It's got tiger. Tiger, good man. And what's this thing that you guys like to Ice eat? Cream. There you know. <laughs> this thing here is a... Banana. Yeah? Computer. Beautiful. A child's speech usually develops in a typical predictable pattern. Children initially simplify the adult production of a word using rule-governed processes. Their intelligibility gradually improves as they age, so at about two years of age they're about 25% intelligible, and by about five you should be able to understand most of what they say. Red. Beautiful talking. Doing the screen, you may note that the child's using some of the typical phonological processes common at certain ages. Tell me what these things are. Socks. Excellent. Alexander's got pretty smelly socks, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And this is a? Mouse. Lovely. And these are? Scissors. Yep. And this is a? Bus. Champion. If your child is still using some processes, it's very useful for them to hear the correct adult version of the word during conversation. So you could, if they say tat instead of cat, you can repeat the word back to them correctly without actually correcting them. You could say, oh, look there, yes, it's a very fat cat. Look at that cat over there. This gives the child the, the opportunity to hear the correct version of the word. What's this thing? Spider. Yeah. Star. And that one is a? Crab. Would you be able to catch that? Not that one. Okay. What's this thing? Truck. Yeah, truck, yep. Yeah. And these are your fingers, and this is your? Thumb. Nice work. And these are your? Teeth. Nice work. And what do you brush you at night time? You brush your? Teeth. Nice work. And this is a? Feather. Nice, excellent. Hey, can you do this sound for me? Stick your tongue out like this and go. Good stuff. Good man. Champion job, Manny. This activity aims to develop listening and comprehension skills, or receptive language, which is important for later school learning. During this activity, the child is given a number of separate information segments, which must be combined to solve the riddle. This skill is relevant to the ability to see the whole picture or main idea. Solving the riddle may require some guesswork initially, but any attempts by the child should be encouraged, so long as the student does not focus on one detail only. The video shows a typical child aged four years, nine months doing the activity, and the downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. Okay, William, I've got a special guessing game here. I have a bag full of animals, and I'm going to give you some clues. And you can have a guess, and if you get it wrong, I'll give you more clues. Okay, here's the first clue. You ready? This is an animal that lives on a farm. It's not a sheep. Good job, because sheep do live on farms, but it's not that. It's an animal that lives on a farm, and it's a very, very fast animal. Uh, oh, mate, Jim, there you go. Next one to guess, you ready? This animal is very, very dangerous. It's a lion. 
It's not a lion. I'll give you more clues. It's very, very dangerous and it lives in the water. A crocodile. Oh, mate. Good one. Nicely done. <laughs> bit me. This animal is enormous. <laughs> Would you like more clues? This it's an elephant. Oh, mate, you got it straight away. Okay, last one, matey. This animal lives on the farm. It's not a sheep. It's an animal that lives on the farm. And... It clucks. Ah, Easy peasy. If you're doing this activity at home, don't limit yourself to just animals. My son especially likes trying to guess things that I'm drawing or a description of food that we may be having for dinner. The beauty of this game is that you can play it anywhere with almost nothing required. Younger children will usually require fairly obvious clues, but older kids can generally cope with more cryptic clues. In the long term, Good receptive language skills that are involved with this activity benefit the understanding of more complex language and reading comprehension of longer paragraphs. This activity aims to develop both receptive and expressive language skills through a conversation about simple pictures that have one element missing. Good conversational language skills develop over time, so the video example shows my son doing this activity at two years, ten months, and again at four years, eight months. And you'll notice that younger children can't cope with more complex questions, where they're required to give a reason why something is needed. In some situations, this is a good opportunity for you to actually explain and teach the child. The downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. It is a bike, but there's something silly about that bike, isn't it? What's wrong with the bike? Um, broken. What's wrong with it? Um, um what's wrong with it, Dad? Well, you tell me. Um, no. <gasps> Have a look. What's missing? What's the bike missing? Um, wheels. Oh, no way! It's missing wheels! Can you draw some wheels on the bike? Put some wheels on there. Oh, beautiful wheels. Have a look at this. What's this thing it's here? It's an elephant. What's wrong with that elephant? What's it missing? Um, his trunk. Oh, no way! Quick, can you draw a trunk on the elephant? Oh, good job. Oh, beautiful. Why does an elephant need a trunk? Because it likes spraying water on its back. Fair enough. Okay, next one. Have a look at this. What is that thing? A car. And there's something missing. Wheels. Why does a car need wheels? So it can move. Champion job. Lovely wheels. I like that one. It's very round. Have a look at this kid here. There is something silly about this kid. What's silly about him? He doesn't have a fat... He doesn't have a mouth. And why is that a problem? Because he can't talk. Oh, no. I've previously played this game in the sand down the beach and drawing chalk pictures on pavement, but it also works well in a 3D form with Lego or modelling clay. Kids do seem to like the sabotage element with this game, and for older kids it could be even incorporated into a cooking activity where essential ingredients or utensils are missing. Activities such as this can be particularly helpful in improving the ability to participate in conversation, but try to avoid the tendency to test the child and only use one type of question. Instead, use a variety of questions and comments of varying difficulty in a natural conversation. This activity targets storytelling or narratives, basically the description of a sequence of events which could be fictional or non-fictional. Children will typically develop basic storytelling skills during the preschool years via retelling of stories, either told or read to them, and then relaying of news and events. They'll initially start with very simple picture descriptions, but these will become more complex over time and evolve into a true narrative with a beginning, a middle, an end, character names, titles, etc. When telling news or narrating a story, speakers must independently organise and maintain an extended monologue, and doing this is a lot more cognitively and linguistically demanding than simply having a conversation where the other speaker can help maintain the discourse. The videos show my son at a variety of ages demonstrating his storytelling skills. 
The downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. One day, Ellie Brown and Stan was trying to get us though to sleep, but her noise was keeping them awake. The elephant story. Okay, let's have a look. What you're going to do is you're going to fold it together like this and make a little little book. Can you do that? Oh, nice work. Okay, but before we tell the story, I want to talk about the pictures first. Okay, so let's have a look at the first picture here. Tell me all the things you can see in that picture. He's thirsty. He's thirsty? How do you know he's thirsty? Because of that. What's that stuff that comes off you when you're hot? Um, sweat. Sweat, I like that word. Nice job. So what is this animal? Elephant. It is an elephant. And do you know where he is? Can you tell where he is from the picture? At a circus. How did you know that? Because of that. What's that thing called? A circus tent. Yeah, champion stuff. So here's an elephant at the circus and he's very hot and he's sweating. Can you tell me what you think he's going to do? What's he going to do? He wants, he's going to have a drink. There you go. Hey, when you really, really want a drink, you feel really, really... Hot. Yeah, you, but you feel really, really fur... Thirsty. I like that word too. So here, what's a good name for the other? Can we make up a name for this elephant? Um, Swarmy. Swarmy the elephant, okay. Okay, Swarmy the elephant. What's he doing in the next picture? Having a drink. He is. He's using what do you call that bit of the elephant? Trunk. I love that word too. The trunk of the elephant. He's putting it in the bucket, slurping up a whole heap of water. How do you think he feels when he does that? Um, he feels good. He feels good. Feels nice and happy. Have a look at the last picture. He's putting it all over him. He is. What do you call it when you when you do that to yourself? Um, throwing. Throwing it, yeah, or splashing it, yeah, or spraying it. There he is, he's throwing it. What was his name again? Swarmy the elephant, spraying it all that. What, why is he doing that? Why would he spray water all over himself? Um, so he won't be hot. Excellent. So he cools down, he feels really hot. What do you reckon he's going to do after that? He's going to have some more. Huh? Good idea, have some more water. Okay, I want you to tell a story, but you've got to make sure it's a champion story. You've got to tell me everything that's happening, all the names of the people involved, everything that's happening all the way through. But can you just tell me, when you start a story, what's a good way to start a Once story? Once upon a time. Oh, I like that way to start a story. Fantastic. Okay, from the start. I want to start by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll read it at a oh, is that the top? Once a drink. Oh, is that the title? That's a good title. Once upon a time at a circus there was a elephant and he went out to see elsewhere. But it was too hot and he went to his bucket. But there was no water. Oh no. Uh, but then the keeper came and gave him some and he drank it all up and he was happy the end champion stuff that dog is so smelly said Moody Mrs Jones but she never gave that bar that dog a walk no that dog, that dog a bath that dog is so boring said All they did was crawl and fight, crawl and fight, crawl and fight. But that, that dog was sad, 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 so he yet yay on the ground and he had it like the end of the world had come. But that dog jumped up. He, I'll show you them, said that dog. This is a pretty easy skill to work on in everyday life. You could simply read a story to your child and have them retell it to you or someone else. 
such as the video example of my son telling a story to his brother. Visual cues do assist younger children in this situation, so use pictures as a prompt. Preschools typically have photos of the day's events ready to view at pickup time, so look at them with your child and have, it, have them describe what happened at preschool that day. More capable children might even be able to phone grandparents to tell them about special events. Storytelling is a very important ability which can affect a wide range of other skills such as joke telling, memory and literacy. This activity looks at the semantic relationships between words, i.e. how words are grouped together in categories. Understanding and explaining why objects are grouped into different semantic categories is a language skill that develops over time, but associations such as these become increasingly important as the child language skill improves. The video example show with my son doing the activity at age four years, nine months, and the downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. Have a look up the top, tell me what these two things are. Knife and a fork. Knife and a fork. And knives and forks are both types of? Cutlery. Cutlery. Fantastic. Hey, what's another type of cutlery? You have knives, you have forks, and you have? Spoon. Top job, mate. Can you draw a spoon there? Easy, Easy peasy. Good-o. That's just a baby spoon. Yeah, that's a good spoon, mate. I like it. What's this thing called? Chair. And this is a desk. a desk. Fantastic. Hey, chairs and desks are both types of furniture. What's a different type of furniture? Another type of furniture? A wall. Oh, yeah, walls are in your house. What else is a type of furniture? Chairs. We got chairs. Tables. Tables. That's a good one. There you go. You could draw a table there. Tables. What's the type of furniture that you sleep on? Excellent. That's a good bit That's of furniture. A That's a good one. I like it. What's this called, Manny? What's that stuff? Coke. Oh, have you drunk Coke before? Just a little bit. <laughs> Mummy gives them bit. We might have a chat to Mummy about that. And what do Mummies and Daddies drink? Um, coffee. Coffee. So, Coke and coffee are both types of? Drink. Excellent. What's a different type of drink? What's another drink? Lemonade. I like it. Draw some lemonade there, mate. Is that your favourite drink? Yes. This video shows a simple activity involving matching objects based on what they're used for. Understanding and explaining why objects are grouped into different semantic categories is a language skill that develops over time, but associations such as these become increasingly important as a child's language skills improve. The video example shows my son doing the activity at four years, nine months and the downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. Okay, Maddie, have a look at this page here. Have a look up the top. There's a whole heap of things up the top and there's a whole heap of things down the bottom and you've got to match them up. So can you tell me what's this thing here? A fork. It is a fork. What do you do with a fork? Eat. You do. Is there something down the bottom that you eat with? Yeah, you eat a burger, but what's something you eat with? Yeah, the knife. Good job. Join the knife and the fork up, please. Hey, can you tell me something else that you might eat with? You eat with a knife, you eat with a fork, and you eat... With a spoon. Good job. Join them up. Knife and fork, join them up. Daddy, look what I did. I can't do I could see, mate, yeah. What's this one, mate? It is. What do trucks do? Pull things to another wheel. Yeah, <laughs> another place they do. And what else do they do on the road? They... Make things. Yeah. What do they do on the road? What do you do? What does the person do in the truck? They... They drive. They do, don't they? Is there something down the bottom that you drive? Excellent. Join those two together. Hey! It's not on the page. Can you think of a different one? Trucks drive, cars drive. What else might drive? Taxis. Excellent. I like it. Taxi's a good one. What's this thing, mate? Um, capsicum. <laughs> you reckon? It does look like a capsicum. What do you do with a capsicum? Eat. Yep. Is there something down the bottom that you might eat? Excellent. What's your favourite thing to eat? Mm -hmm. My favourite thing is... 
Is it? What's a different thing that you like to eat? Mango. Mango is a good one, isn't it? At some stage, you may notice your own child spontaneously sorting toys into groups based on various aspects. For example, farm animals and wild animals, or road transport and water transport. You could encourage this by incorporating categorization into other activities, such as packing away toys or groceries, uh, for example, sorting food that goes into the fridge and food that goes into the cupboard. Good categorization skills improve the semantic networks between words and helps children to remember and organize new vocabulary. Phonological awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate the sounds within words. Research has shown that phonological awareness is a key precursor for literacy development. Typically, children will develop skills with syllables and rhyme first and then more complex tasks such as identifying and manipulating the sounds in words. This video shows my son performing the various syllable activities at, at a variety of ages. And the downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. I'm going to do some clapping of a word and you clap the word too. So you've got to do this, you've got to go kangaroo. Can you do that? Kangaroo! Excellent, do this one. Screwdriver. Excellent. Can you do this word? Can you go hippopotamus? Hippopotamus. Excellent. Do this one. Helicopter. 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 Try that one again. Helicopter. <laughs> you ready? So if I said kangaroo, you do this. You go kangaroo. Can you do that? Kangaroo. Good man. Okay, do this one. Go rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit. Just do it. Just do one rabbit. Go rabbit. Rabbit. That's it. Good job. Next one. Do this word. Helicopter. Helicopter. Try it again on the drums. Helicopter. Good work. Try this one. Parachute. Parachute. Good job. Parachute. Can you do that one? Parachute. Good man. Do this one. Screwdriver. 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 Got it. Syllable identification can be taught through simple games and tasks included into the child's everyday routine, such as clapping out the names of toys or characters in their favourite book. I've seen preschool staff incorporate the clapping of syllables into children's names as they send them off to get ready for lunch, for example. One of the beneficial carryover effects you might note for this skill is the child's ability to say words with multiple syllables also improves. For example, a younger child may say didor for dinosaur, but when clapping out the word at the same time, you'll notice you get a better version of it, dinosaur. What's this thing? A cow. It is a cow. And this isn't a girl, it's a... Boy. Good job. Hey, say that word. Moo! Yeah, but say the word, say cow. Cow. And that boy. one? Boy. <gasps> cowboy, what's a cowboy? What's a cowboy? I don't know. You don't know what a cowboy is? What's Woody out of, out of um, Toy Story? A horse rider, that's a cowboy, isn't it? A star. It is a star, and this is? A fishy. Oh, great job. Just say fish. Fish. Hey, say, say, say them together. Star and fish. Star, fish. Good job. Hey, say it again, but don't say fish. Star. Good job. Say it again, but don't say star. Fish. <gasps> Say it both together. Star and fish. Starfish, isn't it? Do you know what a starfish is? What's a starfish? It's a fishy. No, it's not a fish. What's a starfish? It's in the ocean. It is. Is it one of them? Do you see them down the beach? Yeah. You do, don't you? Okay, matey, another sneaky game for you to do. Can you tell me what is this thing? A cow. And this is a... Hey, can you clap those two words and say that at the same time?
You do it? Cowboy. Oh, champion. Hey, what's a cowboy? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a man who rides a horse. Is it one of them? There you go. Fantastic. Hey, say cowboy again, but don't say boy. Cow. Oh, fantastic. Say cowboy again, but don't say cow. Boy. You're good at this. Nice work. Hey, this is even trickier. This is so hard. Your brain might explode. Say cowboy again. Cowboy. Say it again, but instead of saying boy, say girl. Cowgirl. <gasps> Sneaky. Nice work. Phonological awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate the sounds within words. Research has shown that phonological awareness is a key precursor to literacy development. Typically, kids' skills with syllables and rhyme will emerge first and then they'll gradually become more competent with more complex tasks such as identifying and manipulating the sounds in words. Initial exposure to rhyme should occur during the preschool period and this will be followed by recognition of rhyming words and then the child will be able to actually produce rhyming words. The video shows my son doing some rhyming activities at different ages. I've included a video of him completing a made up lyric from a song, which is how he started being able to produce rhyming words. The downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information about this. Willoughby wallaby wummy, an elephant sat, sat on mummy. A willoughby wallaby waddy, an yes, elephant sat Willoughby Wallaby Whopper, an elephant sat, sat on, on Popper. Willoughby Wallaby Wine, an elephant sat, sat on Mine. Willoughby Wallaby Wyzak, an elephant sat on Isaac. Willoughby Wallaby Weathen, elephant sat on Ethan. Willoughby Wallaby Wathew, an elephant sat on Matthew. You're very good at this game, aren't you? Hey, tell me a rhyming word that goes with whopper. What rhymes with whopper? Popper. Have a look at this game, mate. This is a rhyming game. You know about rhyming words, don't you? Yeah? Rhyming words are words that sound the same. So, Alexander, Salamander. That's a sander. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good made-up word. <laughs> Have a look at this. What's that thing, matey? A key. Tell me, which word rhymes with key? Key. B. Oh, there you go. You knew already. I was going to say key hat or key B, but you knew. Can you draw a line from key to B? Can you make up another word that rhymes with key B? B. Nice one. I like it. What's this thing? Bat. What rhymes with bat? Bat boy or bat hat? Bat and a hat. Excellent. When you initially do rhyming identification, give the child a choice of two options to make it easier for them. More competent kids will be able to generate their own rhyming words without any additional assistance. Rhymes are a relatively difficult concept to teach a child initially, but a very easy one to expose them to. Many kids' books and songs have a really strong sense of rhyme. Preschool teachers and local librarians will be able to give you suggestions for these. This is a metalinguistic activity which involves the understanding of language rules. It's designed to introduce a child to basic information about how we make certain consonant speech sounds. Manner of articulation is one of the elements that give consonants their distinctive sound. Different sounds are made in different ways. And one of the simplest distinctions is short sounds versus long sounds. For example, short sounds are made by holding back air in your mouth and then releasing it suddenly. So, p, b, t, d, k and long sounds are made by forcing a continuous stream through your mouth. For example, f, v, sh, s. Please have a look at the video demonstration showing a typical four-year-old doing this activity. The downloadable instruction sheet has more information. There's a whole heap of monsters here and all of these monsters need to have tails. But, I'm going to say a sound and if I say a long sound, like you draw a long tail. And if I say a short sound like t, you draw a short tail. OK? 
Okay. Long sound, long tail. Short sound, short tail. This monster here, mate, he goes like this. He goes... Is that long or short? Long. Excellent. Draw a long tail on his bottom. Well, that's very long. I like it. Can you do the sound too? Can you go... That sounds very long, doesn't it? Okay, this monster here, he goes like this. Ready? D is that long or short? D short. It's short. Draw a tiny short tail on his bottom. Can you do the short tail? Can you go? D D Excellent. This monster down here, mate, he makes this sound. He goes... Is that long or short? Long. It's a long one. Draw a long tail on him. You say it at the same time. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's so long. This metalinguistic activity was originally created as an additional element for a preschool pre-literacy program, talking about various aspects of speech sounds. Skills identifying aspects of sounds, such as these, can also be used to assist spelling. This activity could easily be incorporated into school-age literacy activities as well. This is a metalinguistic activity which involves the understanding of language rules. It's designed to in introduce children to basic information about the parts of the mouth that are used to make certain consonant speech sounds. The place of articulation is one of the elements that give consonants their distinctive sound. Different sounds are made using different parts of your mouth. And the basic articulators we talk about for this introductory level activity are the lips, the teeth and the tongue. These articulators can act on their own. For example, b is a lips only sound, or two or more of them can work together. For example, f involves the lips and teeth together. Please have a look at the video demonstrating a typical four-year-old doing this activity. And the downloadable instruction sheet has more relevant information. So have a look at the picture of the mouth that goes with each of the pictures. Have a look, there's parts of your mouth. You tell me what these parts of your mouth are. What's this part? Your tongue. It is. And what are these? Teeth. Excellent. And what are these things? Your um, lips. They are your lips. Good job. So there's a picture right here. And there's your lips, there's your teeth and your tongue. And you use your lips, your teeth and your tongue to make different sounds. So you have a look at these pictures when I make the sound and you tell me whether or not I'm using my lips, my teeth or my tongue. Are you ready for this first one? Watch my mouth. Watch my mouth. Ready? It goes like this. It goes... What am I using? Am I using my lips, my teeth or my tongue? Your tongue. I am. Can you colour in your tongue next to the drum? Nice job. Good looking. Blue tongue. It's like a blue tongue lizard. Have a look at this ball one over here. Watch my mouth. You tell me which one, which part of my mouth I'm using. If I'm using my lips, my teeth, or my tongue. Ready? B, 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 b. You're, you're using your lips. I am using my lips. Colour in your lips on that one. Can you say that sound? Go. B, b, b. B, b, b. Can you feel it when you're doing it? Can you feel that you're using your lips? Have a look at this one down here. There's a spray bottle. Have you used spray bottles before? No. No? Okay, you ready? Watch my mouth. You tell me which part of my mouth I'm using. Ready? You're using your teeth. I am using my teeth, but I'm also using something else. Have a look. Keep watching. Your lips. I am. I'm doing two things. I'm using my lips and my, my teeth. Colour in both. This metalinguistic activity was originally created as an additional element for a preschool pre-literacy program, talking about the various aspects of speech sounds. Skills identifying aspects of sounds such as these can be used to assist spelling, and this activity could also be incorporated into a school-age literacy program. The videos were originally intended for parents to see their children doing the activities so that they could replicate them at home. And children usually get better if they, they do the activity again and again. More competent kids are typically able to act as a good model for the kids that are having difficulties with the activity. These activities are intended to be a fun thing for children to do. Children will usually only have an attention span of 10 to 15 minutes, and these activities usually run for that amount of time. If you believe your child's having significant difficulty with these activities, 
have a talk to your local preschool teacher and they may suggest contacting a speech pathologist. I welcome any feedback regarding these activities. Please email me and if you have any questions or any feedback that you'd like to give. Please download the activities and have a go with your child, but make sure it's fun, please.